What's going on guys? Welcome to another Python tutorial. This one's coming from a request I got on Facebook to show how you can change the granularity of data being shown on a chart. So what is that in case you don't know what granularity is? It's basically how much data is being shown on a chart. So in this example here with this one day of uh, GBP USD Forex ratio data, we've got 62,000 data points. Well, your eye can't see the difference between 62,000 data points and like 12,000 data points. The only difference is a minute change in like the thickness of the line since it's so close together it makes the line look thicker. But as far as the trajectory and everything like that, there's really no difference there. The main difference though that is you're being penalized for is the amount of processing time it takes not to load that data but actually to draw it up on a chart. So whether or not you're using matplotlib or you're using some other maybe a JavaScript chart and you're just using Python in your back end to load the data and display it on you know maybe some sort of web app that you've got. Uh, the real problem and the real processing time and the real loading time for your user is actually in the uh, loading of super high granularity data that you don't need. And the only time you need that granularity is when you zoom into the chart. Well, then when you zoom into the chart, you're, you don't even have to be loading old or that data that's not being shown. So there's a lot of ways that you can use this to actually save on a ton of performance. Uh, so that's what we'll be covering today. So. Uh, this code right here is actually on my website. I'll put a link in the description for anybody uh, that needs it. I did put up the raw code here for you guys for modifying the granularity of data here. Uh, the sample code is here. The web address is just uh, syntex.com slash capital gbpusd dot zip for zip. Comes with a one day of data and actually comes with a month of forex tick data. So you can play with that if you want. But for the video we'll just be using the one day. And then here is the actual sample code. And then I've also just included some images here. Uh, this would be 62,000 plots, so the full 62,000. Then with the function that we'll be writing in this tutorial, this is one fifth of that, so 12,000 plots basically. You really can't tell the difference between these two charts, again, other than the thickness of the line. See, like right here, it just looks a little thicker uh, simply because there's more points, and so it just you know gives the impression that that line is thicker, but it's, it's not. Um, and then this was 1 15th granularity. Again, you didn't really lose too much. You did lose the highs and the lows, right? The, this line peaks a little bit lower than the original line, which is slightly above this dotted line. Then we come down here and it's almost kissing that dotted line. But for the main focus of, you know, the point of granularity is to save on loading time and show the data that matters. Um, and so it's, it's definitely a huge, a huge help. And you don't have to go down to 1 15th, right? We've already shown, you know, a fifth of the granularity saves a ton on processing and you don't really lose too much. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We'll actually write a function uh, where you can choose how much you know granularity you actually want. So go to uh, the link in the description, get the sample data and get that starting code that will look just like this basically. So now what we actually want to do is go ahead and write a function to do this. Now really as with anything, I mean there's just you know pretty much an infinite number of ways that we could do this. Uh, but what we're going to do is just, depending on the granularity, we're basically going to average that data. So that's usually how most charting applications are going to do it if they offer granularity changes, is they just take a group of data and they average it. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, to change this, since this was you know some old code uh, that I just wanted to take, it's some code that displays some high granularity data, so that's why I'm using it. Um, so what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and take this part, the, the part where we define all the data, and we're just going to move it out of here so we can call it in a function. So just hit you know, control X to cut it and paste it up there. And that's all we really need to do there. Now let's define a function. Uh, we're going to call this function uh, define change granularity. So we're just going to call it change granularity. Then we're going to pass three variables through it. One is going to be the X variable, one will be the Y variable, and the third one is going to be div by, and that's going to be like how much do you want to divide this data by? So 5, 15, 45, 100, whatever. So uh, now we've done that, we're going to define two variables. We're going to have grand x, and that's just going to equal whatever was passed through this x. Then we're going to have grand y, and that's going to equal whatever is passed through the y. Now we're also going to have two empty arrays. It'll be changed grand x, empty array. 
changed gran y empty array and if you can't guess that's where we're going to populate with the new data so next what we're going to do is we're going to say um, you know granularity of x basically like where are we currently is going to be the length of whatever was passed through x you could also use the length of whatever was passed through y we basically just want to know where are we starting and now what we're going to do is kind of actually work backwards uh, because depending on the size of the data, like let's say uh, you're working with data that is um, 1,099 data points long and you decide you want to do a 100 granularity on that or divide it by 100. If you went from zero, starting at the zeroth point and started averaging stuff, uh, you might, in, you would in theory miss out on the last 100 points. So we actually want to start at the latest point and work our way back when it comes to averaging. So any missing data or any data that doesn't have enough data to be averaged will be the end data, not the most recent data. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is say while GX, oops, sorry, it's lowercase g capital X, is greater than whatever we're dividing by. Um, so let's say we're doing a 5. So while GX, because we're starting at the GX being equal to the length of the data that we're passing through, and so as long as it's greater than whatever we're planning to divide by, then we're going to do this. And that way, uh, as long as, at the end of this, we're going to you know, do a little minus equals um, of div by, so we move by chunks of data. So uh, we're going to say X list. Uh, and that's going to equal whatever gran x is. And then we're going to do gx minus uh, div by. And so that's our starting point and whatever this, like, you know, this list of x variables is. And then we're going to go all the way to wherever we are right now with gx because this is what we'll be modifying. So it'll just be gx minus div by to gx. So let's say uh, we're using a you know, 15 div by. Uh, and we're at the uh, one thousandth variable right now at, for gx, so it would be gx minus div by, so gx minus 15, so 1,000 minus 15. So for all you math majors out there, that would be 985 to gx, which would be 1,000. So 985 to 1,000 um, is what list we'd be considering. Now what do we want to do with that list? Well, with both x and y, we want to just average it. So date in this scenario is being passed through a numpy load text operation and we're converting it using m dates so we're converting that date and it converts it so you can either use a unix timestamp to pass through x so x is your date variable usually right if you're using dates obviously if you're not using dates and this is a number then you don't even need to worry about what i'm yapping about but if you are using dates before you would pass it through this operation you would either have to convert that date stamp to a unix timestamp or convert it to this little uh, m date stamp, which is not Unix. I don't know what it is, but it's something. So anyway, uh, keep that in mind. It must be a number, right? Because you're going to average it. So uh, yeah. Anyway, so Gran X, that's what we're going to do with Gran X. Now what we want to do yeah, is average it. So we're going to say X A V G, and we're going to we're going to do an averaging operation. Uh, if you don't know what lambda is I do have a tutorial on lambda it's like a way to write a quick one-line throwaway function um, and yeah so you can watch that tutorial on lambda it's called like WTF is lambda or something like that so now reduce and we're gonna use uh, lambda and again this is we're just doing this so we can average everything and our variables or our parameters for this lambda will be X and Y then we're just gonna say X plus Y and then we're going to do this on the X list. So that adds up everything in the list. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to divide it by the length of X list. Now, the problem here, even though luckily we're using float data, you, you could, in theory, have some data that is all whole numbers. So when you do this equation, it would actually return to you a forced whole number, not a... Uh, um, you know something with decimal points so just to save ourselves from ever having to worry about that we're going to convert this div, div by or well I can't say div by that I guess that <laughs> might confuse some people what we're dividing by turn that to a float so it forces this to return a float um, just so we're safe now the next thing we're going to do uh, let me make some space is now we're going to do our y list so we're going to go ahead and just do the y thing here so I realize GX 
we're mostly just using the length of x just so we know how long the data is, but we might as well do both conversions within the same while loop and save our, our uh, processing. So while list will equal basically this, only we're going to use, um, well, grand y instead. The rest of the variables we can continue using. Um, so I'm just going to copy this, paste this, and change that x to a y. We can still use gx because, again, it's just referencing the length of data. So we'll leave that there. Now we're going to say y avg equals reduce. And actually, yeah, let's go ahead and copy and paste this averaging function as well. Might as well do that. Paste. And now we need to change this to y list and this to y list. And the rest of it uh, will stay the same. So we're just going to average both of these lists now. And that's what's where, where we're at now. So now that we've averaged these, we need to append them um, to our uh, array here. And so what this is actually going to wind up doing, if you have, it depends on your charting application, but if you have kind of a um, crude charting application, in what we're about to do is going to, in reverse order, populate this array. That might be problematic for some of you guys, so if it is, I highly suggest you watch my tutorial on how to reverse the order of a list um, that'll probably, that'll be like the video right before this one. <laughs> um, but you can also search it or if I, rec if I remember to do it, I'll put the link in the description since it, that will cause some trouble for some of you guys, depending on your charting application. Um, so yeah, so changed grand x dot append and we want to append the x, uh, average and then we're going to do changed grand y dot append y abg. Finally, the last operation we must do is going to be gx minus equals whatever we're dividing by. That way it continues uh, running through this, and then when finally there's no more space, it stops this while loop, stops populating these arrays, and we're ready to bebop on our way. The last thing we want to do then, now that we're out of that while loop, is we want to return whatever the uh, x variable was now, and that's the changed granularity of it, and then we also want to return the changed gran y. So now when we're all done, um, we're ready to chart. I'm going to leave uh, this regular graph raw FX here and I'm just literally going to just highlight this and paste the second one down here. I'm going to hit graw ra or <laughs> graph raw FX2 and let's go ahead and call the first one real quick just so we can see that it is uh, working. So graph raw FX so we'll save that, run that and it'll take a second because it's got to load up all that data um, and then draw all that data but here it is now so you can see that this is our regular chart. Now let's actually uh, do a graw, oh gosh, I can't say graph raw. Graph raw FX2. Now we haven't made any changes, so we need to make our changes. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out this other calling of that one. And now what we want to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to call that previous, uh, we're going to call this changed granularity function. So let me just copy and paste uh, this because we are just for remembering purposes. And I'll paste it out. So, um, so this the data that we have is bid and ask, right? So we've got basically two bits of data that we want to convert. So the first one we'll, we'll just say bid gran x, and then we'll say bid gran y equals, and then it's going to be change granularity. And our x variable uh, is date, and our y variable will be bid for now. And then let's just, for the first round, we'll cut it in, into, into 5, right? So we'll divide it by 5. Then we're going to do the exact same thing again uh, with ask gran x, ask gran y equals change granularity, date, ask 5. Now we want to fix this data, right? So we're going to just literally copy and paste into here uh, y variable, then ask gran x over date, ask gran y over ask, and we're set. Um, oh shoot, we, <laughs> we modified the original. Uh, why didn't anybody tell me I was doing that? Uh, so depending on which function you edited, uh, let me just change this. I'm going to leave this as gra graph raw fx2 or graph raw fx down here. Uh, this is graph raw fx2. So if you were doing as I said, not as I did, 
Um, you were editing gra Graph Raw. Man, I can't say that. Graph Raw FX2. But if you were following along, just take note that you'll have to, like, you want to change the name of this function. So I'm, whatever function you were just editing, change that to 2 and make sure the original function, just leave that as it is. So now we're going to actually plot Graph Raw FX2. Now, just for kicks, let's go ahead and just print len date, and then we'll print len of bid grand x. So now let's uh, save that, run that, wait for that chart to pop up for us. Did we call Yeah, okay. So here's our chart. Obviously, it looks very similar, and now you can see the original data was 62,012 uh, data points long for each variable and now each variable is only 12,400 data points long. So, I mean, we're talking, um, well, a fifth of the data, yet, I mean, no real visible change. Now, what if we change this to, like, uh, 105, right? Let's really affect this and run it again. Now, you can obviously see, I mean, there's been a huge change, right? Well, obviously, because we went from 62,000 points to now only 590 points. But, I mean, as far as trajectory is concerned in the actual, you know, pattern of the line, we're seeing very little difference, right? Your only change is from the absolute high to the absolute low. But if you look at the actual data points here, this is 1559. This is 1560, right? Or 1.560, 1.559. And this data only goes to four, it goes to four decimal points, right? And so you lose, you know, a, a little bit of data because the original maybe had this peak here all the way up to about here and it made it a little shorter basically. Um, but as far as, you know, the actual pattern of the line, I mean, we've, we've got no major change, you know? And that was a huge change. And like, nobody's gonna be doing that. But like, you know, five or 15 is gonna make a massive difference on um, the loading time of your charts and also the drawing time, like 62,000, I mean, it sounds like a lot of data. 62,000 data points really isn't that much data for matplotlib to plot up, honestly. Um, when you start getting into like the millions, and I guess it sort of depends on um, what kind of machine you're running on, but when you start getting data into like the millions or the 10 millions, then the division of granularity helps you so much. And as you saw from like, you know, from on a chart of that size, 62,000 data points, you can see just fine. 12,000 data points, you can see just fine, right? So if you're plotting, like let's say you had a million data points on your chart, and you know that uh, 12,000 data points looks just the same as, you know, a million data points or however many data points you've got on there, you can, in theory, divide your data by 83 or something like that, right? That's as close as it gets, a million divided by 12,000. So, uh, obviously, like, the, the higher your data is, right, that you're trying to stuff into a little chart that's, like, six inches by four inches, uh, you know, you can really make some massive changes to it. So, anyways, hopefully that answers some of y'all's questions. I had gotten a few questions on that and then finally decided to go ahead and make a, make a tutorial on, on how you can divide up your data like that without killing yourself. Uh, so hopefully you guys have learned something uh, useful. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.